So I'll move on to the next topic. Um, I'll try to say this in the most sensitive manner. You know, sometimes the media reports stories. And sometimes these stories are based on allegations. And they haven't been proven. And sometimes these allegations are reported. And they're not just reported, but they're highlighted, front cover, above the fold. And then stereotypes are formed of our community. And unfortunately, we've seen this not once and not twice. But we've seen it several times. In your position as legislators, as people involved in the cloud, as community leaders, how do you feel this affects our community? And how do you feel it affects your jobs as being able to be as productive as you possibly could be? Dave. Everyone has a story. Let me tell you my story. <laughs> Last year, I was chair of the Land Use Committee. I was sitting in a meeting at, uh, with, uh, I'm not going to name who was in the meeting, but there were other government officials who were in the meeting. And we were talking about a certain development project, whether we were going to approve it or not. And there were officials from different various agencies. And I kid you not, one of the officials in the room turned to me, uh, turned to the group, it was, must have been 10 of us, and said, well, you know, we have to take an extra look at this project because, you know, it's one of those developers. I said, what do you mean it's one of those developers? And they said, you know, one of those developers. And then it hit me, as I'm sitting there with my yarmulke and beard, that one of those developers meant it was someone from the community. And I pointed out, and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm from that community <laughs> as well. And they're like, no, obviously it's not you. <laughs> the point is that every community has bias. Let's just be honest, right? The reality is that there's plenty of bias against a Muslim who walks down the street is visibly Muslim, just as there is plenty of bias against someone who is visibly Jewish, and we have to recognize that. I'm going to take a slightly contrarian view and perhaps a, 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 a slightly different approach than some of the panelists, and that is that, yes, everyone's innocent until proven guilty. And certainly, when there are allegations that are unfounded, we should push back. However, when someone is actually guilty, and we know they're guilty, and they've embarrassed the community, we should throw them out of our shuls. And we shouldn't accept them in our communities. And we should send a very clear and straight message that that kind of behavior is unethical, it's illegal, and against, it goes against halacha and our hashkafa and who we are as Orthodox Jews. And if we did that, that would be the best message that we could send rather than trying to fight defense all the time and say, oh, we're not that bad. And when you see that happening, when the next time a guy comes into shul and he did all sorts of horrible things, but he's going to get shishi because he gives $10,000 a year to the shul, when you throw the bum out, that's when you'll start seeing the tide will change. Now that I'm done, I'll give you the slightly more moderated versions of my other two panels. <laughs> well, I need to follow that? I'm not sure I can. <laughs> um, but I certainly appreciate the passion, David. Um, I'm not sure I have an answer to your question, but I will say this. It's um, very painful at times. And I see those headlines and people ask me about it, whether at the workplace or anywhere else. And it's tough. And at times I bite my tongue, I shake my head, and I'm not exactly sure that I have what to answer. And, uh, but I will say this, I still keep my head high. Because we are a beautiful community, and as David pointed out before, with the amount of chesed that we do in our, in our community, we do have a lot to show, to showcase to the outside communities. And um, I, I just use it as, um, you know, when you see, I, I, I said this a lot throughout the campaign, and I'm, I'm sure some people thought it was just a cliche, but I actually, I really b believe in it, that my number one responsibility prior to anything legislatively that, I, that before anything is to, given that I am who I am, a Hasidic Shehinga man with you know, the long echo, the long jacket, I need to make a Kiddush Hashem. And that's an enormous responsibility that's on me. And I remind myself every single day, fear or not, right or wrong, you'll be up in Albany, people will look at you and they'll try to paint a picture of an entire community. And that responsibility is on me. And we have to know that we are from Yidin and Golis, and we need to conduct ourselves in a, in a, in a way that makes a real Kedesh Hashem. May I? 
David, I'm going to take a little bit of a different. Uh, you said contrarian, so I don't want to make you. Let's do it. I, 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 I got a few questions to David too. But I'm let you. Many go. people here <laughs> paid a lot of money to come this weekend. At the very least, they should be entertained. <laughs> so, 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 David, I will say that while I agree with you that um, we, and I guess with what Simcha said, that you have uh, a representation, but at the same time, I think that there are uh, people in the media who enjoy taking what somebody did and painting our entire community based on that person. And it is not correct for us to feed into that. It is not correct for not us with that. To, to feed and, and, to, and to tell the media, oh, you said this and this and this and this and this, and we agree or we're 100% behind you. There are people that do things wrong. There is a legal system that's in place. There is whatever has to happen has to happen. People get a, a representation. But that doesn't mean that because the media latches on to something or because the media decides that somebody is in this position and you know let, let's rile everybody up. I think that's incorrect. You know what? If the media would rile us all up for everything good that we did, if the media would do the same thing and say, wow, here's somebody from the community who did something like this. I, we think the community should get behind him and say what a great guy is. You know, maybe we could have that part of the conversation. But I think what the question was, was how to interact with what some of the media does and how they, we know that what we call clickbait or what we call selling newspapers is, is a good thing. So, you know, that, that's great. But I certainly, as an elected official, will not feed into that. And just because, you're right, you don't want to take somebody who, who has obviously done something wrong, I leave it to a rub, I leave it to a decision that has to be made, but don't feed into the hype that the media creates. That's my position. I don't think that was the question. I think yeah. there's two separate points here that could be equally valid, which is there is a media bias against the from community. That's a fact, and I think that we see that all the time where many folks in the media do not delve into the sensitivities and the complexities, and part of it is because they don't understand the community, so they make assumptions. So certainly, nobody is defending that when there is an allegation of wrongdoing, which is I think you see a lot. I think everyone's entitled, and I said that very clearly from the get-go, we see a lot of people who don't, in fact, do things that are wrong, and they get thrown under the bus for things that they don't do, and I agree with you on that. That it could also be true. These two facts could be true at the same time, right? I think this is the problem. We, we become so polarized and we just start saying, oh, we have to have one existence versus another existence. It could be true that many times the media and I spoke out strongly against front pages like the New York Post when they, when, when Nebuch, we had a person in the community who was killed. I don't even want to mention his name because it was so embarrassing and they threw him on the front page of the Post and they made fun of him. That was 100% wrong. And that is wrong. And when you do that, it continues to be wrong. It could also be wrong that when there are some cases, not all, but some cases, where everyone agrees that someone did something horrible and offensive and against Torah values, and that person, in my opinion, everyone's entitled to their opinion, in my opinion, should be thrown the heck out of the community. I really believe that. We shouldn't welcome those people or those exceptions. So my point is there's two, there's two ways to fight it. One way of fighting is saying, you, the media, is wrong. And the other way to fight it is, look, on the rare occasion when it happens, and it's very rare, because our community in general, because of the rules and regulations and halachas that we follow, tend to be very honest and very straightforward. But when it happens on that rare occasion, and it happens in a spectacular fashion, my view is, throw the bum out. What about a person, David, who we say has paid his debt to society, um, <laughs> has done his time, paid his debt to society, do we accept him? Do we, accept, do we not accept him back anymore? After we, you know, we do, he did something wrong. He caused Chol Hashem, but it's who that. are we to the? I don't understand what this. Who no, I'm just we, asking the question. Why, how do we? Why am I playing God? You're not. You're not the dying. The, the din v'dayin. There's a cheshbon of, of what someone does wrong. Someone did something wrong. He was mechal shem shemayim. Granted, but I think he's saying. Some, 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 I'm saying some, that some there are people. Shabbos, some 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 Shabbos, shouldn't Shabbos, be, right? We wouldn't let him. We wouldn't that's give right. Him a liar, 100%. No, yes, we would. We'd be mekar of him. That's what his kir of organizations. So who are we to say that this Aveiri gets ostracized? I don't know. Look, respectfully, and that Avery Avi, I don't killed. know. Avi, I do not know which shul you daven in, but in my shul where I daven in Brooklyn, if you pull up in your Ferrari and park right in front of the no parking zone on Shabbos, you do not get shishi. But there are plenty of people. Let me finish my point. But there are plenty of people who have done all sorts of Averis, not a lot who pull up into a shul and they're getting shishi now just because they have a few bucks and they're bad people. I'm sorry. I think that if we're having an honest conversation in a organization like this, where this is among from people, and I think the point of the Aguda Convention is that you have the greatest minds and the greatest people get together to have an honest conversation once a year about the challenges of the community. If you're asking me, one of the ways to fix that perception is that when someone is in fact a crook 
or when someone is in fact a Ganev, or when someone is, has in fact done something where he created a massive Chil Hashem, where you open up the papers every single day, and this guy is in the papers, don't give him an Aliyah. Yes, you can quote me on that. I stand by that, just as how if somebody pulls up in a Ferrari in front of Shul on Shabbos, don't give him an Aliyah either. They're the same halachas that you're violating, right? You shop, you machal Shabbos for Hesio, we don't give you an aliyah. If you go out there and steal money but for Hesio and say, look at me, I stole money, which people actually say, don't come to my shul. Certainly I will tell you that when I've seen people like that, true story, I'm not going to name names, I've walked out of the minion. I will not dive in with someone well, like that, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, look, if someone is, if someone is caught up and uh, in trouble with the law, they will obviously pay a price for it. They're going through the legal system and there will be consequences. I think the question is on how the media perceives us as a community. How they, how they show, uh, how they put our, every time something happens, a rabbi on the front page. That's terrible. Was, we all agree that's we terrible. All know, we all know, if I may pick on a, one media outlet, which I usually tell elected officials not to do, for example, in New York, the New York Daily News has a specific reporter focused on the growing Jewish community. So, I mean, we are, the way we are painted in the day-to-day -day media coverage is what the, I believe that's what the question was. And it's more than but that. And I want to take it a step further. It's not about how we treat that individual in show. You're depending wrong. On the crime, You're wrong. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why I disagree with you. Because in the end of the day, it's not, that feeds into the perception as well. The newspapers are wrong when they paint the community with a brush, for sure. But then you can't turn around when that person gets honored at a dinner and say, oh, we don't agree with this person. If you don't agree with this person, then why did you give him an Ali and why did you honor him at a dinner, right? You have to be intellectually honest. Good is good, bad is bad. And as a community, we are good and we do amazing things. And in fact, we have the lowest crime rate of any community. We have lower people who are engaging in fraud in any community. We have the safest streets of any community. It's proof that in fact, we have a wonderful community. But when there are exceptions to the rule, my opinion is we should not embrace those people and we should not let them participate in the community like normal citizens, just as how if somebody was Michal Shabbos for Hesia, we would not allow them to participate in similar events. I think the same principle should apply. And the reason I think it relates to the media is because I think the media sees that and they say, are you being honest or are you not being honest? And there are rare exceptions. And it's rare that we have it in the community, but when it happens, we should set a firm line and say, those people do not represent our community, because they don't. I think that, just to add on to this, I, I, I could agree. We could agree. We're making progress. This is we good. We could agree. <laughs> this is good, yes. To, to disagree how a community... Oh, we're disagreeing and disagreeing? Right? How okay. a community... How we got to the first step. I disagree. How, how a community should handle, or how a particular Kehillah or Rav Vashul should handle this. We know there's a concept of tshuva, there's a concept of kapara, and I don't know if it's in our realm to decide how we should be punishing people that have done whatever they've did. However, on a second point, on a, on a different point, yeah. and this is what I'm trying to bring out the media angle, there's been times, and it unfortunately has happened recently in specific communities, I don't want to go through, to, to go through this specific incident I'm referring to, those that know it, know it. Those that don't will get my picture. There was a group of people involved in what was alleged as a scandal. And it was a very complicated scandal. It had to do with welfare, with benefits. Did they intentionally do it? Did they not intentionally do it? Such a detailed allegation. Something that members of the government didn't even know if what they were doing was correct or not correct. And it was plastered on newspapers for months and then six months later, they ran another five-day series on this. Is it the job of the community leaders to stand up and say, this newspaper, stop. Now, your case of the New York Post was an obvious, horrible, anti-Semitic thing. A person was killed, and they made fun of him. They shamed his family. Here it's different. Someone is being alleged, and it's a strong allegation, there's no proof to it. It's complicated. These are good people with families and children that go to school. Should we as should you, 
we, whoever it may be, as community leaders, stand up by the allegations and say, these are good people as far as we know. Until it's proven, they are going to continue to be treated as innocent, respectable people. And sometimes Bali Tzedaka. And unfortunately, we, sometimes we don't hear it because maybe politicians are scared to speak up because they don't want to be associated with those that are alleged as criminals. But then again, maybe there's a responsibility to the community to say, one second, I'm going to defend these people because they haven't been proven. And if they're proven, maybe I'll go David's route and I'll just throw them out of the shul, or maybe I won't. But at that point of the allegations, when the stereotypes are created, what is your role as community leaders? I think I may... What I feel are pretty clear before, I think that the media is wrong, I think the media taps into it, and I think that the media enjoys being able to sell newspapers. Some people may call it anti-Semitism. I think that it's good advertising, it's good clickbait, and the more stories, the more time you could uh, put a story with our community on it, knowing that you have an audience that wants to read it, people are looking to sell newspapers, and it's our job to express our feelings about it. Anyway, gentlemen, we could talk on this topic all night, and it's been <laughs> a good one. We it's kind of fun. We could, it's kind of fun, but I want to move oh, on. Come to, on, uh, come time on. Time is a little bit short. <laughs> I want to move on to a couple of things. We touched on this before, but I want to kind of dig a little deeper.